All right, guys, what's up? Pretty Hair here to bring you a little video based on the changes, the balance changes that we will be seeing played for the PWC at HRX. Now, we are playing this tournament on OB63, so for all intents and purposes, I'm going to basically be running, referencing all those patch notes uh, and talking about what it does to those champions specifically. Uh, it's worth noting that Vivian has or is not going to be played for this tournament, so I'm just going to kind of skip over her. Not really pay her much attention. We're just going to get into the meat and potatoes of basically every character that was touched and how they will be affected. So we're going to start this video by giving a, a TLDR of all the balance changes to the champions affected by the OB63 and OB63 hotfix patches and what that means for their viability going into the PWC. After I give a TLDR on every single balance change, we're gonna go and get into the, the meat and potatoes as to why I think those things for my TLDR descriptions. Um, and that's probably just so, for those of you that just want to tune in real quick, uh, get the bite size, the real high octane pieces, you can listen just to that point. I'll let you know when we're gonna go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, but without further ado, let's hop into it. TLDR for the Androxus changes are that this patch saw nerfs to a popular Androxus legendary card that gave him damage to targets below 40% HP, but these nerfs will most likely not affect his viability during the PWC whatsoever. We also saw an added effect of plus two ammo per clip to an otherwise unviable legendary. I wouldn't be surprised to see this picked up at PWC, however, I don't feel that it drastically improves Androxus's overall viability. TLDR for the Talus changes coming into OB63 and the added hotfix is overall a very big win for Talus. The opportunity cost for Talus's best legendary card reduced to bring other legendary cards into the conversation. However, it's unclear if a new style will arise, so Talus was viable before. These changes make him more so. At the end of the day, I don't see Talus all of a sudden being banned or picked every game. However, he probably will still fill uh, that niche that we saw during qualifying. The TLDR for Terminus is basically that he was made a very strong first ban, first pick champion during the qualifying lands because of a cauterized bug. Though he may still have been viable after the bug was fixed, four direct nerfs, Terminus' staying power and effective HP have caused him to fall far from grace. Since Terminus isn't able to provide the staying power he once did, I wouldn't expect to see this champion much at HRX, if at all. The one caveat to this is that Paladins is a game that always fosters creativity and ways to break the norm, though a new playstyle around one of Terminus's other legendaries could possibly arise in between the time between qualifying and actually playing the tournament. It would probably be the Calamity Legendary if I had to pick one. Moving on to the Torvald TLDR. Um, just a change in horizontal collision size for Torvald, so while making it easier to hit and therefore kill, I don't think this will significantly affect Torvald's viability. Expect to see him banned, picked just about as much as he was during qualifying. Alright guys, let's get into the meat and potatoes of why I think what I think for those TLDR sections too long. Didn't read or didn't want to listen, I understand and respect all y'all's time, but for those of you that do want to dive a little bit deeper, you have the option to do so now. For anyone else, go ahead and just click off, and I hope you enjoy the video up until this point. So, first one on the list here is going to be Androxus. His legendary card, Darkstalker, had a damage bonus reduced from 30% to 20%, and basically my thoughts are... This was the most popular legendary option for Androxus at the PPL Fall Finals and PWC Qualifiers, so it's definitely worth kind of taking a look at. With this legendary equipped, Andro does 580 damage a shot to targets above 40%. However, when they fall below that threshold, he would start dealing 754 per shot previously. After this nerf, he only hits for 696, a difference of only 58 damage per shot to targets under 40%. This is a pretty minor nerf to Androxus, given the condition attached to Darkstalker. I don't anticipate this to affect Andro's viability very much at HRX. However, I do anticipate this will push more folks to at least try the new reworked Heads Will Roll Legendary. Heads Will Roll has changed to just have an added effect, so it's exactly how it used to work, plus something else. It now increases your clip size by 2. This is a pretty interesting change. Ammo is something, as we've seen with Vivian, that can really swing what a champion can do. 
There's a couple of really important factors affected by ammo, but the most important is how much damage you can output per clip. Changes to ammo changes answers to questions like, can I kill this person without having to reload? Can I afford to miss shots in this clip and still be able to score this frag? Now the added twist to heads will roll is the 50% headshot damage multiplier. This is unreliable for most of us, even pro players, but when it does happen, and of course it's going to help, but it's really hard to count on as headshots aren't very reliable in affecting your DPS in my opinion. So for the purpose of my analysis here, I'm going to label this as a cherry on top and call it a day. More ammo also allows Androxus to more easily get full value out of ammo restoration cards like Sleight of Hand and Buying Time. A small win, but every shot counts a lot when you're talking about Androxus. This legendary has always included extra headshot damage, but it wasn't until the extra ammo was added in that people really started to play around with this legendary, and this is probably due to the fact that it's just, at its core, a more reliable DPS increase. And within the first few weeks of this change, we saw players in the PGS start to use this legendary, though I definitely expect to see it more at PWC. However, does this suddenly change Androxus to make him more viable than he otherwise would have been? No, not really. I expect to see a split based on preference between this legendary and Darkstalker. So, getting into Talus' changes. Um, I think both of these changes are, you can talk about them together, so that's what we're going to do here. Overcharge was changed to no longer consume ammo, but the duration was cut from 4 seconds to 3, as well as the legendary card Raging Demon uh, was reworked. It used to be the card that did give you the infinite ammo, but now that is provided to you at base. Um, but this legendary basically gets you back to that old duration of 4 seconds, increasing the base duration by 33%, blah, 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 blah. Um, Overcharge though, it is the primary engagement tool for Talos providing that 33% attack speed steroid and has a lot of great loadout cards to supplement the steroid in various ways. So while the base duration was decreased from 4 to 3, the infinite ammo effect being moved from the Raging Demon Legendary to the base ability is such a monumental win for Talos. Without infinite ammo, Overcharge will cause you to run out of ammo multiple times during its duration, resulting in a massive DPS loss. Remember how we talked about ammo being super important earlier? This is, you know, going alongside those lines. This forced most Talus players to need the Raging Demon Legendary to avoid this DPS loss. With these changes, his other two legendaries become much more viable just due to the opportunity cost of Raging Demon being lowered so drastically. The effects of this might not be felt immediately, however. Talus has never really been a straightforward character. He took a minute to figure out even for good players. And his other two legendaries provide interesting and unique playstyles around Rune of Travel. But ultimately, the value for these two options has yet to be determined. These changes definitely make Talus's legendaries more viable than before, uh, but I feel it's up to the players to figure out how to maximize the potential of these two cards, and it just really hasn't been seen up until this point. So diving a little deeper into these Terminus changes, and he was the character probably hit the hardest. Um, actually, you know, without a doubt, hit the hardest by all of these changes. Um, like I said, um, I, I got to preface this with, although Terminus was first picked, first ban in many of the games of the PPL Fall Final and PWC qualifiers, his viability and relative strength was definitely inflated by a cauterized bug present in the, those events. Uh, in short. You know, basically to sum it up, uh, Cauterize with the new diminishing return system was uh, wrong in the way that it was applying. Basically, it would only take the most recent application of Cauterize. So, for instance, say your teammates with Cauterize 2 were shooting somebody, and then you with Cauterize 1 came in and shot someone. Your Cauterize 1 would override the Cauterize 2s, uh, effectively letting more healing through to them. Because as a result of that, I think most players just opted not to mess with Cauterize too much. We didn't see a ton of it. We saw a little bit picked up here and there. Um, but overall, I think healing was much more prevalent um, in that LAN. Uh, and obviously, Terminus was a very effective healing sponge. Um, up until that point, he was sort of picked up, especially just for the ability to have an incredible staying power and just stay on the point basically forever. Uh, but the first change that he saw was pa to Power Siphon, his shielding ability. Uh, the initial energy cost increased from 15 to 20%, and then the hotfix further nerfed this ability to a 
initial energy cost. This is pretty big. A higher initial cost will, of course, reduce the amount of uptime you get on Power Siphon, especially if you only pop it up to catch specific high priority things like Fire Spits, Grumpy Bombs, various ultimates, yada, yada, yada. You can only bring the shield up three times now instead of what was once four without running out of juice, unless you literally cancel the ability as fast as possible after activating it, but doing so makes it almost impossible to get value for it. So he was hit there in terms of his staying power. And this was like, you know, you could throw out Power Siphon. That's when you're going to be receiving a lot of heals, that sort of thing. So uptime definitely hurts it. Uh, reanimate, the charge rate was reduced by 15%. So another nerf hitting Terminus where it hurts. He was picked up at the PPL Fall Land for his ability to be incredibly hard to kill. Obviously, uptime on an ultimate that brings a champion back to life contributes greatly to the primary role Terminus had been filling. Uh, the next two changes are worth just kind of talking about together. I think they're easy to lump in. The health of the champion was lowered from 4,500 to 4,000 base, as well as the most popular legendary card, Undying, uh, seeing a reduction in the damage, uh, th the damage reduction threshold being reduced from 50% of your HP to 40%. Basically, this legendary card gives you 35% damage reduction when you fall below a certain HP threshold. That threshold has been reduced. Uh, these nerfs are, like I said, best talked about in conjunction with one another. More direct nerfs to what Terminus has historically brought to the table. Staying power. This was the only legendary card selected for Terminus during the PPL Fall Final and the PWC Wildcard Qualifiers. This card originally provided 35% damage reduction to 2,250 HP, or 50% of the 4,500 base, for a total of 3,037 effective HP from the legendary card and 5,287 effective HP overall. Now, the card still provides that same 35% damage reduction, but only to 1,600 HP, or 40% of the now reduced 4,000 base HP, for a total of 2,160 EHP from the legendary card, and a total of 4,160 overall effective health. Overall, an 1127 effective HP nerf for Rock Daddy. The last nerf Terminus received was Shatterfall, having its cooldown increase from 14 to 15 seconds. This is not a huge deal, though uh, a, no a mobility nerf nonetheless, which doesn't help his case for viability at this point. Uh, moving on to the Torvald changes, probably the least significant, I would say, of all of them. Horizontal collision size increased uh, this isn't a massive change, but it does make Torvald easier to hit, which overall makes him easier to kill. This change was made to bring his actual hitbox in line with his personal bubble shield that is almost always present on the character. Uh, funnily enough, I personally struggle sometimes to hit Torvald for the reason of like I'm shooting the bubble, but it's not quite in line with where his hitbox is. But that's, you know, neither here nor there. Overall, Torvald was and still will be viable and picked during PWC. So, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching up until this point. I know this was a little bit longer of a video. And if you guys enjoyed this, this will probably be something that I look to do going forward uh, on both my personal YouTube channel. I'm going to post this up on the Paladins World website as well. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this style of video and keep the conversation going. What do you guys think uh, in relation to all these balance changes as well going into the PWC? Again, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.